Buchenwald Concentration Camp German, Konzentrationslager KZ Buchenwald, IPA, Bu Exenwald, literally, in English, Beach Forest was a German Nazi concentration camp established on Ettersburg Hill near Weimar, Germany, in July 1937, one of the first and the largest of the concentration camps on German soil, following Dachau's opening just over four years earlier. Prisoners from all over Europe and the Soviet Union Jews, Poles and other Slavs, the mentally ill and physically disabled from birth defects, religious and political prisoners, Roma and Sinti, Freemasons, Jehovah's Witnesses then called Bible students, criminals, homosexuals, and prisoners of war—worked primarily as forced labor in local armaments factories. From 1945 to 1950, the camp was used by the Soviet occupation authorities as an internment camp, known as NKVD Special Camp No. 2. Today the remains of Buchenwald serve as a memorial and permanent exhibition and museum. History The SS constructed Buchenwald concentration camp in 1937. The camp was liberated by the U.S. Army on of April 1945. Dwight D. Eisenhower, the supreme commander of the Allied forces, later wrote, Nothing has ever shocked me as much as that site. Between 1945 and 1950, it was used by the Soviet Union as an NKVD special camp for Nazi prisoners. On January 6, 1950, the Soviet authorities handed over the Buchenwald camp to the East German Ministry of Internal Affairs. The camp was to be named KZ Ettersburg, but this was changed to Buchenwald, after the beech forest which surrounds it, since Ettersburg carried associations with the Enlightenment writer Johann Wolfgang von Goethe (1749–1832), an iconic figure in German culture. He lived in nearby Weimar and took walks through the woods in the area. According to modern folklore, he wrote some of his works under the so-called Goethe Oak, the only tree on the site to survive the construction of the camp. However, the Buchenwald and Mittelbau Dora Memorials Foundation say that the name Goethe Oak was simply an epithet made up by the inmates of the camp in commemoration of Goethe. The tree was destroyed by Allied bombing in 1944, written in the camp's main entrance gate as the motto Jedem das Sein English, to each his own. The SS interpreted this to mean the superior race had a right to humiliate and destroy others. It is embedded in the metal gate so that it can be read properly from inside the camp, rather than when standing outside. Between April 1938 and April 1945, some 238,380 people of various nationalities, including 350 Western Allied prisoners of war, S were incarcerated in Buchenwald. Waxman and the Buchenwald and Mittelbau Dora Memorials Foundation place the number of deaths at 56,000, not including all those prisoners who died in another camp after having overcome the death march from Buchenwald. During an American bombing raid on August 24, 1944, that was directed at a nearby armaments factory, several bombs, including incendiaries, also fell on the camp, resulting in heavy casualties among prisoners 2,000 prisoners wounded and 388 killed by the raid. Today, the remains of the camp serve as a memorial and permanent exhibition and museum administered by the Buchenwald and Mittelbau Dora Memorials Foundation, which also oversees the camp's memorial at Mittelbau Dora. <laughs> <laughs> Command structure <laughs> Commandants SS Obersturmbannführer Karl Otto Koch, the 1st of August 1937 to July 1941. SS Standartenführer Hermann Pister, 1942 to 1945. Buchenwald's first commandant was Karl Otto Koch, who ran the camp from 1937 to July 1941. His second wife, Ilse Koch, became notorious as Die Hex von Buchenwald, the Witch of Buchenwald, for her cruelty and brutality. In February 1940 Koch, to his and his wife's delight, had an indoor riding hall built by the prisoners who died by the dozen due to the harsh conditions of the construction site. The hall was built inside the camp, near the canteen, so that oftentimes Ilse Koch could be seen riding in the morning to the beat of the prisoner orchestra. Koch himself was eventually imprisoned at Buchenwald by the Nazi authorities for incitement to murder. 
The charges were lodged by Prince Waldeck and Dr. Morgan, to which were later added charges of corruption, embezzlement, black market dealings, and exploitation of the camp workers for personal gain. Other camp officials were charged, including Ilse Koch. The trial resulted in Karl Koch being sentenced to death for disgracing both himself and the SS. He was executed by firing squad on April 5, 1945, one week before American troops arrived. Ilse Koch was sentenced to a term of four years imprisonment after the war. Her sentence was reduced to two years and she was set free. She was subsequently arrested again and sentenced to life imprisonment by the post-war German authorities. She committed suicide in Eichach Bavaria prison in September 1967. The second commandant of the camp was Hermann Pister 1942-1945. He was tried in 1947 trials and sentenced to death, but 28 September 1948 he died in Landsberg prison of a heart attack before the sentence could be carried out. <laughs> <laughs> Female prisoners and overseers The number of women held in Buchenwald was somewhere between 500 and 1,000. The first female inmates were 20 political prisoners who were accompanied by a female SS guard officerin. These women were brought to Buchenwald from Ravensbrück in 1941 and forced into sexual slavery at the camp's brothel. The SS later fired the SS woman on duty in the brothel for corruption. Her position was taken over by brothel mothers as ordered by SS chief Heinrich Himmler. The majority of women prisoners, however, arrived in 1944 and 1945 from other camps, mainly Auschwitz, Ravensbrück, and Bergen-Belsen. Only one barracks was set aside for them, this was overseen by the female block leader Franziska Hungsberg, who came from Essen when it was evacuated. All the women prisoners were later shipped out to one of Buchenwald's many female satellite camps in Summerda, Butilstedt, Mühlhausen, Gotha, Gelsenkirchen, Essen, Lippstadt, Weimar, Magdeburg, and Pennig, to name a few. No female guards were permanently stationed at Buchenwald. When the Buchenwald camp was evacuated, the SS sent the male prisoners to other camps, and the 500 remaining women including one of the secret annex members who lived with Anne Frank, Mrs. Van Don. Real name August van Pels, were taken by train and on foot to the Theresienstadt concentration camp and ghetto in the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. Many, including van Pels, died sometime between April and May 1945. Because the female prisoner population at Buchenwald was comparatively small, the SS only trained female overseers at the camp and assigned them to one of the female sub-camps. 22 known female guards had personnel files at the camp, but it is unlikely that any of them stayed at Buchenwald for longer than a few days. Ilse Koch served as head supervisor of 22 other female guards and hundreds of women prisoners in the main camp. More than 530 women served as guards in the vast Buchenwald system of subcamps and external commands across Germany. Only 22 women served, trained in Buchenwald, compared to over 15,500 men. Anna Fest was a guard at Ravensbrück, who was later tried and acquitted. Ulla Erna Frieda Jur was a guard at Ravensbrück, who was convicted of her crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Allied POWs Although it was highly unusual for German authorities to send Western Allied POWs to concentration camps, Buchenwald held a group of 168 aviators for two months. These men were from the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Jamaica. They all arrived at Buchenwald on August 20, 1944. All these airmen were in aircraft that had crashed in occupied France. Two explanations are given for them being sent to a concentration camp. First, that they had managed to make contact with the French resistance, some were disguised as civilians, and they were carrying false papers when caught, they were therefore categorized by the Germans as spies, which meant their rights under the Geneva Convention were not respected. The second explanation is that they had been categorized as terrorflieger, terror aviators. The aviators were initially held in Gestapo prisons and headquarters in France. In April or August 1944, they and other Gestapo prisoners were packed into covered goods wagons US, boxcars, and sent to Buchenwald. The journey took five days, during which they received very little food or water. One aviator recalled their arrival at Buchenwald. As we got close to the camp and saw what was inside, 
A terrible, terrible fear and horror entered our hearts. We thought, what is this? Where are we going? Why are we here? And as you got closer to the camp and started to enter it and saw these human skeletons walking around, old men, young men, boys, just skin and bone, we thought, what are we getting into? They were subjected to the same treatment and abuse as other Buchenwald prisoners until October 1944, when a change in policy saw the aviators dispatched to Stalag Luft III, a regular POW camp. Nevertheless, two airmen died at Buchenwald. After the war some of the airmen recounted that their rescue was effected by Luftwaffe officers who visited Buchenwald and, on their return to Berlin, demanded the airmen's release. So far these recollections have not been verified with archival records. The Gettingstadt Buchenwald states that a visit by Luftwaffe officers might have happened and that this might have influenced the decision-making process what to do with the airmen. On the other hand, there might have been no connection whatsoever, because the decisions were not made by Luftwaffe officers. Journals kept by Allied airmen directly mention meeting the Luftwaffe Feldweber. Before being transported to Stalag 111, Buchenwald was also the main imprisonment for a number of Norwegian university students from 1943 until the end of the war. The students, being Norwegian, got better treatment than most, but had to resist Nazi schooling for months. They became remembered for resisting forced labor in a minefield, as the Nazis wished to use them as cannon fodder. An incident connected to this is remembered as the strike at Berkheim. The Norwegian students in Buchenwald lived in a warmer, stone construction house and had their own clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Death toll Causes of death A primary cause of death was illness due to harsh camp conditions, with starvation, and its consequent illnesses, prevalent. Malnourished and suffering from disease, many were literally worked to death under the Vernichtung durch Arbeit policy extermination through labor, as inmates only had the choice between slave labor or inevitable execution. Many inmates died as a result of human experimentation or fell victim to arbitrary acts perpetrated by the SS guards. Other prisoners were simply murdered, primarily by shooting and hanging. Walter Gerhard Martin Sommer was an SS Hauptscharfuhrer who served as a guard at the concentration camps of Dachau and Buchenwald. Known as the Hangman of Buchenwald, he was considered a depraved sadist who reportedly ordered Otto Neurer and Matthias Spanlang, two Austrian priests, to be crucified upside down. Summer was especially infamous for hanging prisoners off of trees from their wrists, which had been tied behind their backs, a torture technique known as strapado in the singing forest. So named because of the screams which emanated from this wooded area, summary executions of Soviet POWs were also carried out at Buchenwald. At least 1,000 men were selected in 1941-42 by a task force of three Dresden Gestapo officers and sent to the camp for immediate liquidation by a gunshot to the back of the neck, the infamous Genikschuss. The camp was also a site of large-scale trials for vaccines against epidemic typhus in 1942 and 1943. In all 729 inmates were used as test subjects, of whom 154 died. Other experimentation occurred at Buchenwald on a smaller scale. One such experiment aimed at determining the precise fatal dose of a poison of the alkaloid group. According to the testimony of one doctor, four Soviet POWs were administered the poison, and when it proved not to be fatal they were strangled in the crematorium, and subsequently dissected. Among various other experiments was one which, in order to test the effectiveness of a bomb for wounds from incendiary bombs, involved inflicting very severe white phosphorus burns on inmates. When challenged at trial over the nature of this testing, and particularly over the fact that the testing was designed in some cases to cause death and only to measure the time which elapsed until death was caused, one Nazi doctor's defense was that, although a doctor, he was a legally appointed executioner. Number of deaths The SS left behind accounts of the number of prisoners and people coming to and leaving the camp, categorizing those leaving them by release, transfer, or death. These accounts are one of the sources of estimates for the number of deaths in Buchenwald. According to SS documents, 33,462 died. 
These documents were not, however, necessarily accurate. Among those executed before 1944, many were listed as transferred to the Gestapo. Furthermore, from 1941, Soviet POWs were executed in mass killings. Arriving prisoners selected for execution were not entered into the camp register and therefore were not among the 33,462 dead listed. One former Buchenwald prisoner, Armin Walter, calculated the number of executions by the number of shootings in the spine at the base of the head. His job at Buchenwald was to set up and care for a radio installation at the facility where people were executed. He counted the numbers, which arrived by telex, and hid the information. He says that 8,483 Soviet prisoners of war were shot in this manner. According to the same source, the total number of deaths at Buchenwald is estimated at 56,545. This number is the sum of deaths according to material left behind by the SS, 33,462, executions by shooting, 8,483, executions by hanging, estimate, 1,100. Deaths during evacuation transports estimate 13500 this total 56545 corresponds to a death rate of 24% assuming that the number of persons passing through the camp according to documents left by the SS 240000 prisoners is accurate Topic <inaudible> Liberation from the Germans On April 4, 1945, the U.S. 89th Infantry Division overran Ordruff, a subcamp of Buchenwald. Buchenwald was partially evacuated by the Germans from April 6, 1945, until April 11, 1945. In the days before the arrival of the American Army, thousands of the prisoners were forced to join the evacuation marches. Thanks in large part to the efforts of Polish engineer and shortwave radio amateur, his pre-war callsign was SP-2BD, Gwydon Damazin, an inmate since March 1941, a secret shortwave transmitter and small generator were built and hidden in the prisoner's movie room. On April 8 at noon, Damazin and Russian prisoner Konstantin Ivanovich Leonov sent the Morse code message prepared by leaders of the prisoners' underground resistance supposedly Walter Bartle and Harry Kuhn, to the Allies. To the Army of General Patton. This is the Buchenwald Concentration Camp. SOS. We request help. They want to evacuate us. The SS wants to destroy us. The text was repeated several times in English, German, and Russian. Damazin sent the English and German transmissions, while Leonov sent the Russian version. Three minutes after the last transmission sent by Damazin, the headquarters of the U.S. Third Army responded, KZ Boo. Hold out. Rushing to your aid. Staff of Third Army. According to Tiafel Witek, a fellow Polish prisoner who witnessed the transmissions, Damazin fainted after receiving the message. After this news had been received, inmates stormed the watchtowers and killed the remaining guards, using arms they had been collecting since 1942 one machine gun and 91 rifles. See Buchenwald Resistance, a detachment of troops of the U.S. 9th Armored Infantry Battalion, from the 6th Armored Division, part of the U.S. 3rd Army, and under the command of Captain Frederick Keffer, arrived at Buchenwald on April 11. 1945 at 3.15 p.m. now the permanent time of the clock at the entrance gate. The soldiers were given a hero's welcome, with the emaciated survivors finding the strength to toss some liberators into the air in celebration. Later in the day, elements of the U.S. 83rd Infantry Division overran Langenstein, one of a number of smaller camps comprising the Buchenwald complex. There, the division liberated over 21,000 prisoners, ordered the mayor of Langenstein to send food and water to the camp, and hurried medical supplies forward from the 20th Field Hospital. Third Army headquarters sent elements of the 80th Infantry Division to take control of the camp on the morning of Thursday, April 12, 1945. Several journalists arrived on the same day, perhaps with the 80th, including Edward R. Murrow, whose radio report of his arrival and reception was broadcast on CBS and became one of his most famous. I asked to see one of the barracks. It happened to be occupied by Czechoslovaks. When I entered, men crowded around, tried to lift me to their shoulders. They were too weak. Many of them could not get out of bed. I was told that this building had once stabled 80 horses. There were 1,200 men in it, five to a bunk. The stink was beyond all description. They called the doctor. We inspected his records. There were only names in the little black book, nothing more. 
nothing about who these men were, what they had done, or hoped. Behind the names of those who had died, there was a cross. I counted them. They totaled 242. 242 out of 1,200, in one month. As we walked out into the courtyard, a man fell dead. Two others, they must have been over 60, were crawling toward the latrine. I saw it, but will not describe it. Topic. Civilian tour In mid-April, 1945, Weimar's civilians were required to complete a tour of the camp to see for themselves the horror, brutality and human indecency perpetrated. Many were in tears, others fainted and could be taken no further. Liberated inmates were dying at a rate of 40 every day. Topic. Soviet Special Camp 2 After liberation, between 1945 and February 10, 1950, the camp was administered by the Soviet Union and served as Special Camp No. 2 of the NKVD. It was part of a special camps network operating since 1945, formally integrated into the Gulag in 1948. Another infamous special camp in Soviet-occupied Germany was the former Nazi concentration camp Sachsenhausen, Special Camp No. 7. Between August 1945 and the dissolution on March 1, 1950, 28,455 prisoners, including 1,000 women, were held by the Soviet Union at Buchenwald. A total of 7,113 people died in Special Camp No. 2, according to the Soviet records. They were buried in mass graves in the woods surrounding the camp. Their relatives did not receive any notification of their deaths. Prisoners comprised alleged opponents of Stalinism, and alleged members of the Nazi Party or Nazi organizations. Others were imprisoned due to identity confusion and arbitrary arrests. The NKVD would not allow any contact of prisoners with the outside world and did not attempt to determine the guilt of any individual prisoner. On January 6, 1950, Soviet Minister of Internal Affairs Kruglov ordered all special camps, including Buchenwald, to be handed over to the East German Ministry of Internal Affairs. Demolition In October 1950, it was decreed that the camp would be demolished. The main gate, the crematorium, the hospital block, and two guard towers were spared. All prisoner barracks and other buildings were raised. Foundations of some still exist and many others have been rebuilt. According to the Buchenwald Memorial website, the combination of obliteration and preservation was dictated by a specific concept for interpreting the history of Buchenwald concentration camp. The first monument to victims was erected days after the initial liberation. Intended to be completely temporary, it was built by prisoners and made of wood. A second monument to commemorate the dead was erected in 1958 by the GDR near the mass graves. Inside the camp, there is a stainless steel monument in the place of the first monument, the surface of which is maintained at 37 degrees Celsius 99 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature of human skin, all year round. Topic. Staff Topic. Commandants Carl Otto Koch from 1937 to 1941 Topic. Physicians Gerhard Rose Waldemar Hoven Hans Eisel Wolfgang Plahl, born 1909 missing, 1945. Also Commandant of Buchenwald Female Camp Ossenlager, 1945. Topic. Guards Martin Sommer Topic. German Head of Personnel Herman Hackman Topic Notable Inmates Roy Allen, American pilot 
Jean Amery, Austrian-Belgian writer Robert Antelmy, French writer Jacob Avigdor, before World War II Chief Rabbi of Drohobich, afterward Chief Rabbi of Mexico Konrad Bars, psychiatrist Fritz Beckhardt, German-Jewish World War L fighter pilot Robert Benoist, French world champion motor racing driver and member of the British Special Operations Executive, executed on 9 September 1944 Bruno Bettelheim, Jewish-Austrian-American child psychologist Josef Bynaszkiewicz, Polish socialist politician Léon Blum, Jewish-French politician, pre- and post-war long-term French prime minister Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Protestant theologian and prominent member of the Confessing Church Boris Braun, Croatian university professor Rudolf Brazda, the last known surviving homosexual deported to the camps, died in 2011 Rudolf Breitscheid, former member of the SPD and leader of its faction in the Weimar Reichstag, died in the camp in 1944 Christopher Burney, British officer and special operations executive SOE operative Robert Clary, French actor, Corporal Louis Lebeau in the Hogan's Heroes television series René Cogni, French general Suren Franciszek Swatopelk Chetwertinsky, Polish politician Édouard Daladier, French politician, former head of the French government Marcel Dassault, French aviation entrepreneur who founded the Dassault Group Elie de Saint-Marc, member of the French Resistance, later involved in the attempted Algiers Putsch of 1961 Léon de Larbre, French artist and museum curator Laura Diebold, French resistant, Compagnon de la Libération Willem Dries, Dutch politician and prime minister, held as hostage in Buchenwald from 1940 to 1941 Franz Ehrlich, German architect, designer of the Buchenwald entrance gates Marion Falar, Polish-Jewish concert pianist and virtuoso. Ludwig Fleck, Polish serologist and philosopher of science. Maria Ferescu, Romanian film actress, died in the camp in 1943. Henri Frager, French resistance member, second in command of CART, then head of DONKEYMAN network. Joseph Frank, politician, Czech communist. Joseph Friedensen, writer and editor. August Froelich, German Roman Catholic priest active in resistance movement against the National Socialism Henry P. Glass, Austrian architect and industrial designer, transferred from Dachau in September 1938, released in January 1939, moved to the U.S. Albin Grau, film producer Nosferatu, 1922 Maurice Halbwachs French sociologist, died in the camp in 1945 Max Hamburger, Dutch psychiatrist Bertrand Herz, French engineer, president of IKBD International Committee Buchenwald Dora and Commandos Kurt Herz Stark inventor of the Kurta calculator, handheld, hand-cranked mechanical calculator Heinrich Eduard Jacob, German writer Paul Emile Janssen, Belgian politician, former Prime Minister of Belgium, died in the camp in 1944 Léon Jaouo, French trade unionist and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Josef Kackel, scout leader, head of the pre-war Polish Scouting Association in Germany Imre Kertész writer, 2002 Nobel Prize in Literature recipient Eugen Kogan, anti-Nazi activist, later Christian socialist, professor, broadcaster and author Philip Phil J. Lamison, squadron leader, Royal New Zealand Air Force Israel Meir Lau, born 1937, Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Israel. Hermann Leppoldi, Austrian composer and entertainer. Fritz Lohner Beta, Austrian lyricist. Artur London, senior Czech communist and writer, future government minister. Jacques Lussieron, blind French memorist and professor. Henri Maspero, French sinologist, pioneering scholar of Taoism, died in the camp in March 1945. Karl Meyer, Adolf Hitler's immediate superior in an army intelligence division in the Reichswehr, 1919-1920 Mel Mermelstein Paul Morgan, Austrian actor, died in the camp in 1938 John H. Noble, American-born Gulag survivor and author, family owner of the Practica Camera Factory, Dresden 1945 André Peel, member of the French Resistance 
Harry Pulivet, an agent of the SOE who managed to escape Buchenwald with FFE Yo Thomas. Henri Christian Pieck, Dutch painter and twin brother of Anton Pieck Paul Rassenier, considered the father of Holocaust denial Jean Raboud, French corporate executive and former chairman of Schlumberger Jakob Rosenfeld, Minister of Health under Mao Herbert Sandberg, artist, designer, publisher of Eulenspiegel Paul Schneider, German pastor, died in the camp in 1939 Jorge Semprun, Spanish intellectual and politician and culture minister of Spain 1988-91 Jura Seufer, Austrian poet and dramatist, died in the camp in 1939 Boris Taslitsky 1911-2005, French painter Ernst Thalmann, leader of the Communist Party of Germany, died in the camp in April 1944 Jack van der Gerest, escapee Fred Wander, Austrian writer Ernst Wieckert, German writer Elie Wiesel, Romanian Jewish-French-American writer, 1986 Nobel Peace Prize recipient FFE Yo Thomas, Royal Air Force Wing Commander and British Special Operations Executive SOE agent, codenamed, The White Rabbit Petr Zenkel, Czech National Social Party politician, Deputy Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia 1946-1948 Princess Mafalda of Savoy, the daughter of Victor Emmanuel III of Italy, died in the camp in 1944. Joachim Ernst, Duke of Anhalt, died in Soviet custody in 1947. <laughs> camp literature Survivors who have written about their camp experiences include Jorge Semprun, who in Quel Beau de Manche, describes conversations involving Goethe and Léon Blum, and Ernst Wieckert, whose Der Totenwald was written in 1939 but not published until 1945, and which likewise involved Goethe. Scholars have investigated how camp inmates used art to help deal with their circumstances, and according to Theodor Ziolkowski writers often did so by turning to Goethe. Artist Léon de l'Arbre sketched, besides other scenes of camp life, the Goethe Oak, under which he used to sit and write. One of the few prisoners who escaped from the camp, the Belgian Edmund van de Vogt, recounted his experiences in a book whose English title is, I Escaped from a Nazi Death Camp. Editions Jordan, 2015. In his work Night, Elie Wiesel talks about his stay in Buchenwald, including his father's death. There is an account of the Soviet NKVD camp, by former inmate Maria Link. Born in Tsarist-era Russia, daughter of a German foundry manager, she was taken into custody due to her fluent Russian. <inaudible> <inaudible> Modern times Today the remains of Buchenwald serves as a memorial and permanent exhibition and museum administrated by Buchenwald and Mittelbau Dora Memorials Foundation, which also administrates the Camp Memorial at Mittelbau Dora. Topic. Visit from President Obama and Chancellor Merkel On June 5, 2009, U.S. President Barack Obama and German Chancellor Angela Merkel visited Buchenwald after a tour of Dresden Castle and Church of Our Lady. During the visit they were accompanied by Elie Wiesel and Bertrand Herz, both survivors of the camp. Volkert Nigg, the director of the Buchenwald and Mittelbau Dora Memorials Foundation and honorary professor of University of Jena, guided the four guests through the remainder of the site of the camp. During the visit Elie Wiesel, who together with Bertrand Herz were sent to the little camp as 16-year-old boys, said, If these trees could talk. His statement marked the irony about the beauty of the landscape and the horrors that took place within the camp. President Obama mentioned during his visit that he had heard stories as a child from his great uncle, who was part of the 89th Infantry Division, the first Americans to reach the camp at Ordruff, one of Buchenwald's satellites. Obama was the first sitting U.S. president to visit the Buchenwald concentration camp. Photo <laughs> <laughs> gallery See also <laughs> 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 <laughs>